Hey there, my name is John Broadwell and I'm an embedded systems consultant and medical device development consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated, and also the developer of the Serial Wombat open source project. So today we're going to be taking a sneak peek at the soon to be released C Sharp library uh, to drive the Serial Wombat 18A B chip. It's the second library that's being formally re released after the Arduino C++ library. And so it's just about ready for prime time. So it's been a while since I've talked to you guys, uh, a couple of months since a video has come out. Since then, we successfully launched the Kickstarter project. And thank you very much to everybody who backed that project. If you backed that project and haven't gotten a chip yet, it's because you haven't filled out your fulfillment survey, which is how Kickstarter sends me the addresses to which I'm supposed to ship. So if you haven't done that yet, get on Kickstarter, fill out that fulfillment survey so I can send you your chips. Uh, the chips are now available on Amazon for purchase. Uh, go to SerialWombat.com and follow the purchase link. It'll go directly to my Amazon store. And so you can get the Serial Wombat 18AB chips in their kits with the carrier PCB and all that uh, going forward. So you may notice this video, the production value lighting, all that's a little worse than normal. I just wanted to do something quick and dirty because uh, you guys haven't seen me in a while. I didn't want you to think that the project had gotten dormant after I got my check from the Kickstarter people. Uh, so let's take a look real quick at the new C Sharp uh, library that's coming out. If you take a look at the uh, GitHub repository that you pull down, and there'll be a link for that. You'll find Serial Wombat C Sharp Lib. Inside here, there's a variety of different folders and uh, projects. Uh, Arduino C to C Sharp, that's a, a converter project I'm working on. Don't worry about that. Intel Hex is used for the bootloader. Uh, Serial Wombat Arduino examples, this is kind of interesting. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the Serial Wombat class library, this is where all of the magic happens, where we have classes that support all of the various Serial Wombat 18AB uh, functionality. The uh, bootloader code, some unit tests that are in development, don't worry about those too much. The uh, Serial Wombat forms library and the Serial Wombat panel application, which I'm really excited to be able to show off. So let's talk just a little bit about the goal behind the Serial Wombat 18AB C Sharp library. People who are uh, well versed and experienced in C Sharp programming will look at this code and they'll say, boy, it looks a little C y like somebody was thinking in C and wrote it in C Sharp trying to shoehorn it. And in a sense, that's exactly what I did. So my goal. Uh, by this fall is to have a C Sharp library, an Arduino C++ library, and a, uh, and a Python library. And each of those have different common semantics that you use. Uh, the way that you name functions, the upper lowercase conventions, the way that you pass parameters. And what I've decided to do partially for my own ease, partially to help build the community, is to throw some of that stuff out the window. That the Arduino C++ library is always going to be the leading library for this project. I will implement everything there and then port it to C++ and Python. And it makes my job a lot easier if basically I can do almost a line-by-line -line conversion, which means that some of the things are going to look like C++ code that's been shoved into Python or C Sharp. And the, so the, the disadvantage of that is that it looks kludgy sometimes and maybe a little prickly to people who are, you know, familiar with those languages and like to follow conventions. The big win is that you should be able to take an example or sample code that you get from someone in C++ and implement it easily using C Sharp. The, the Serial Wombat chip's built around libraries, and those libraries have interfaces. And the big goal was having consistent interfaces across Python, C Sharp, and C++. So if you watch a video that 
shows you how to use the touch sensor and it's showing it on Arduino, the exact same concepts, the exact same interfaces down to the parameters that you pass will be the same in Python and C Sharp. And that's really what I'm going for here is that the idea that hopefully we'll build a community where eventually C Sharp, C++, and Python users can share code and share ideas and share projects and that even if that's not your preferred language or the platform you're looking at, you'll be able to look at it and leverage what other people have done simply by adjusting it to use the same interfaces but a different language. So that's enough for that right now. Just as an example, let's take a look. Here's some C-sharp code that reads the version from the Serial Wombat chip. If we take a look at the equivalent code in the C++, you can see it's almost a line by line conversion, except C sharpized, you know, how, how you declare arrays and things like that. Same thing with supply voltage. You know, these lines are almost the same. Read temperature, hundreds, hundreds of a degree centigrade. Uh, you know, each one of these are a very easy port from one platform to another. And so that was the goal. So did we achieve that or not? Well, if you go into, if you go into the uh, Serial Wombat C Sharp library and go into Arduino examples, you will find that there are a variety of examples written in C Sharp. And what you'll find is that if you look in the Arduino library and go into the examples there under the Serial Wombat library. Uh, let's just open touch, touch calibration. So here is that example in the Arduino. If we go into our uh, solution here that has the Serial Wombat Arduino examples, we can go into touch. And here is the touch calibration. And it's virtually the same code that calls virtually the same interfaces, except in this case, instead of talking to serial, we're going to talk to console. And instead of calling delay, we're going to call thread sleep. Uh, but for the most part, you can look at this and it is a line by line conversion from one language to another. So here's a quick video that we shot uh, late last year on using the cap touch and we can see the calibration. Uh, procedure happening here. I'm putting my finger on it and we're doing that. Let's run that exact same code now. And we'll just hit go. And we get a console. And it is, we can see it is walking through just like the Arduino code going through and saying, okay, how do I best charge up this button? And up it goes, up it goes, up it goes, uh, similar to the Arduino code. And it says, OK, I hit 60,000. That's cool. Now it's calibrating the high limit. Now it's saying, OK, put your finger on the touch sensor. I'll do that. Now it says, remove your finger. We're all set. And now, just like before, I push 1, 0. One, zero, one, zero. So we can see uh, the advantage to this is that essentially we've created the exact same example, both in C Sharp and in C++ for Arduino. That code is very highly portable across projects. And that's, you know, that's really what we're going for here, even though it leaves some warts and some, some places where you say, boy, that really isn't the way that I do that if I was building a C Sharp library from the ground up. So, but, the goal is, you know, uh, make your code easy and portable across different platforms with the Serial Wombat chip. This is really where we're shooting to go with that. So let's take a quick look uh, now at one other thing that I'm excited about, and that is the Serial Wombat panel uh, application. So we will open the Wombat panel windows forms 
And people are saying, oh my gosh, Windows Forms, that's not portable to Mac, that's not portable to Linux. And that is absolutely true. And to the people on those platforms, I apologize. I like cross-platform compatibility, but at my core, I'm an embedded systems person. And Windows Forms is the graphic user interface that I grew up learning to use. It's the one that I'm the most comfortable in. Uh, so that's, you know, what I'm using as opposed to something that's more portable across various platforms. So I hope everybody appreciates that. I didn't want to learn a new cross-platform UI uh, system when really what I want to be focused on is creating examples and uh, working on the Serial Wombat uh, firmware and the associated libraries. Underneath all this is .NET Core code or what they're just calling .NET now. And that should run on Linux, on Mac. Uh, you know, the, the examples that we saw that are console apps should run everywhere. I've not tested that yet, but one of the things that's on my to-do list is to run this, uh, to learn how to run this .NET Core code on the Raspberry Pi, for example. So let's take a look real quick at the Wombat Panel uh, application. And this is what it looks like. And basically, this is meant to be an easy graphic interface uh, to your Serial Wombat 18AB chip. So we're going to go to Open Serial, and I'm on COM98. Give it just a minute. It's flushing buffers. It ran the chip through a reset. And some of the delays that I've got in here are a little bit, uh, a little bit conservative, which means that the things run uh, longer than they, they have to. So, and what we can see is that we came in here and it's, okay, it found my Serial Wombat 18AB on port COM98. The firmware version is 207, which is uh, just about ready to be released. I've run the, the, uh, the uh, unit tests against that. And one thing that's fun here is that you can actually download new versions through the graphic user interface, which is a lot easier than the Arduino platform uh, updates that I've shown you in the past, although those will still be available as well. So just for fun, let's take a look. And what do we got over here? I've got a uh, WS2812 that's connected up to pin four, pin four or pin three? Pin zero, one, two, pin zero, one, two, three, pin three. And we're not using the I squared C right now, so we can use that. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say, okay, you're now a WS2812 pin. And I'm going to say, okay, how many LEDs do we got? We've got 16 on the array that I'm using. We'll use the standard user buffer address. And don't worry about all of this, all the details on all of this stuff. You can go back and watch the WS2812. Here's a link up above. Uh, to see what all of this does. But it's kind of fun because you can play with it in real time as opposed to having to write Arduino sketches. So, okay, so we just configured it for 16 LEDs. Let's take the fourth one and set it to green. And hey, the green LED came up. Okay, let's take the second to last one and set it to red. And we've got a red LED. Uh, actually didn't show oh it's because it's pointed sideways it's, it goes in this direction it's a snake so uh and so basically all of the various things that can happen are there so now we've we've also got we can put that aside a little bit i've got a tm1637 why is this guy not on top okay i gotta work on that uh we can come up here and we can say tm1637 and that'll be on pins it's at clock pin 19 dio pin 18 if we say configure here we can see oh our display just lit up and okay those are out of order we type in the order that uh that it's in and we write the digit order these are the exact same uh commands that we use through the arduino interface through the c sharp library it's just putting them on top and so if we say a b c d Okay, so we can do that. Or we can say, okay, let's write a raw display where we create a box. It's 
So, and all this stuff is super clicky, which is nice because it, it lets you it lets you play with the thing and get it configured the way that you want. And the thing that I think, you know, it, at its core, the Serial Wombat chip is not intended to be something that you play with in real time, although I do find that to be entertaining. Let's do a write raw. And hey, we can see, okay, we've got our box here that shows up just the way that we want it. So, but the fun thing about this is that as it does each of these things, it dumps out, and right now it's in C-sharp only mode, uh, but eventually there'll be three windows here, a C-sharp, an Arduino C++, and a Python window. So as I'm clicking these various things, it's dumping out code that you could copy into your C++, into your C-sharp project, or with very minimal effort, you could port that right now into the Arduino. And the important thing is that you're seeing it, uh, you're seeing the actual values that are being passed to each of the interfaces. So it'd be real easy to take this code, copy it, and paste it. And instead of messing with all of these interfaces, which I already think are pretty easy and pretty good, it's a lot easier if you have the computer fill out all of the parameters to all of those all of those uh, uh, functions. So I'm really excited about that. And, you know, I think we, we touched on this a little bit in the getting started video. There's lots of neat stuff that you can do. Like, let's uh, let's do a public data, monitor public data. You know, there's one of the fun things here is we, we can play with all the threads that you have available in Windows. And so let's just see what our VCC is coming in. And we'll auto sample that. Okay. And here's a real-time live measurement coming off of the Serial Wombat chip of what our VCC is. That's actually running a little high, it looks like, or we're, we're in the couple of percent range. This isn't a red label chip, so it's maybe not as tightly calibrated. But it looks like our, our, our VCC is running about three and a half. Uh, we could also take a look and say, okay, how many total packets have we received? And have to wait a little bit till it auto scales, gets off of this range. But we're sending packets back and forth to the Serial Wombat chip. And, hey, the packet count's going up. It's getting packets every second. And those packets, what are they being used for? They're being used to auto-sample this guy. So uh, let's see. Maybe do one more, and then we'll, we'll call it. What is the temperature? Again, this is a black label chip, not red label, so the calibration is not there. The red label chip would be more accurate. It's reading about 40 degrees C. If that was true, I'd be sweating profusely, which I'm not. But uh, this will, will range linearly with temperature. If you're interested in accurate temperature measurements, uh, get a red label calibrated chip. So all of this, you know, is pretty fun. And, and the initial root of this application was me being able to send commands directly to it during development. So I just sent a version command and what came back here was uh, V and uh, S18 uh, A and uh, version 207. Uh, eventually there'll be some decoders like there are in the protocol uh, analyzer for Salier that will also tell you what each of these packets mean and things along those lines. So but anyway, I'm pretty excited about it. You know, there's a variety of sharp edges still. I haven't handled everything that I should open happen. So let's crash it right now. I'm going to say open port. Oh, we already opened that port. Okay, boom, you get a, you get a, uh, 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 an exception. Don't, for right now, don't fill out a bunch of bug reports on exceptions. I know that there's a lot of sharp edges, and I'll be cleaning those up over time. So anyway, uh, just wanted to show this to you guys. I hope you're excited about it. Uh, if you're using your new Serial Wombat 18AB chip for a project, uh, leave me something in the comments below. I love to know what you guys are working on. Uh, I'd like to know, have an idea of how many of the chips that we sent out from the Kickstarter campaign have actually been opened. People are playing with it. I've gotten a few support requests, but not many, which means you guys either really like my documentation or you haven't gotten around to, uh, you know, doing embedded system stuff in the middle of the summer yet. So... But again, uh, you know, leave me a comment below. Like the video if you like it. I uh, definitely recommend you subscribe if you haven't already because uh, this is the easiest way to get the information. If you're 21 minutes into this video, you're probably already a subscriber, but uh, that would be my recommendation. So take a look on, uh, on GitHub 
for this C sharp code. And it is the 19th of July. By 25th of July, I'll have the uh, 2.07 firmware up and I will put up a quick video on how to bootload that firmware in using the Serial Wombat panel in addition to the methods that are already available there. So until I talk to you again, uh, have fun, keep making stuff. There'll be another video out soon that shows the Serial Wombat panel in more depth. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485 as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.